Come to Māori and Ding Dong, honeys. Your resident loudmouths are here. No whispering in this house, because if you've got something to say, you better say it with your chest. This generation is championing so many social causes, I lose count. But can you count yourself as part of a movement, whether it be climate change or human rights, if you're not moving at all? Your message might get out fast, but will the message stick from streets to tweets? My question to our panelists today, is online activism real activism? Benji, what are your thoughts? Um, I think, you know, online activism, we, we all live in a digital age at the moment, right? Especially given, like, the last two years, you know, we've been in COVID. And so we need to figure out ways and how we can elevate the voices of the unheard. We have our phones like cigarette packets, and so we can use that as a tool to elevate those voices and create social change. I mean, there's been so many movements that have started from a digital platform. I think it's a, it's a good tool, but obviously, you know, very nuanced the way that we um, tackle activism online. But Sylvia, what are your thoughts? Is resharing an Instagram post enough to say that you're an activist? I think that's one small thing that you can do, but if that's all you're doing, then you're not doing enough. The working poor are time poor. Mm. There are some people who are working nights, working overtime, like my aunties and uncles, you know, the people that raised us, that allowed us to be able to have this vocabulary and access to education to talk about these things. So sometimes a reshare is all that they can do, but the people that I think we should be critiquing in their activism are those with the resources and the money and those with the time and the following. Yeah, just on that, what I don't like is our own youth calling out our elders, disagreeing with their opinions and assuming that our elders will have opinions on certain issues. Mm. Young people complain and they say, well, you know, we have all these social issues because of generations before us. Well, you know, most of our elders did not go to university, mm. did not have access to the internet, still cannot use it now. So I think We've got to recognise our privilege as young people, that we have all the tools in front of us to understand and unleash potential in solving these problems. Yeah, definitely. And then yeah. just off that, even the nuance within being young as yeah. well. So us being young people, I think us being the young um, and the brown and the loud, making sure that we also check our voices too, that we're not louder than anyone else who's more impacted and mm. more marginalised than we are. Mm. Yeah. Like speaking on behalf. Yeah, exactly. You yeah. want to speak beside mm. people and yeah. with them and um, through like talano and understanding. All right, let's take our minds back to 2020, the murder of an assembly <coughs> man, George Floyd in America. There was this trend of posting a black Instagram tile uh, with the hashtag BLM and uh, went gangbusters. What are your thoughts in that? I, th I think when it first came up, I was like, this is great. Like, we're getting everybody aware of, like, what's happening. I saw, like, profiles that I just never thought in a thousand years would even think about Black Lives Matter. And I think it was to do with the trend, right? It was trending at the time. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, showing your solidarity for it in that day was, was, was great. With the implication that there was going to be changes in your own life and how you will respond to the things that are happening in America. But as expected, it was just the black tile that was there on everyone's timeline for the day. I think that was about it. And that's all I saw from a lot of people. It's funny because I'm sure you guys have heard it a lot, but you know, you get um, us talking about, you know, Black Lives Matter movement and then you get your actually your own people saying, oh, that's America, we're not black, mm -hmm. but it's, it's not about that, it's it's the fact that it's it's two different things. It is definitely apples and oranges, but we're not really different because there's so many overlaps yeah. between us and our experiences with black people. All right, Tave, with things like Black Lives Matter showing your support on social media, after the hype dies down, how can we make real action in trying to address these problems in our own individual way? There's so many different things we can do, but the first thing that comes to mind is self-examination. Yeah. Anti-blackness in the Pacific community is rife, um, and that's something we need to not ignore. We just need to look at um, the wording, meoli, black thing, um, in reference to people who are darker and people who are brown within our own community, and that's on us. You post up, but then you've got to think, what am I doing 
to perpetuate these power structures. Activism can start in your home, changing the hearts and minds of your family members and having those courageous conversations in your home if you're safe enough to do so. I've had conversations with my brother around not using the term gay as a slur and unpacking why that's a problem. The onus of that shouldn't be on the members of my family who are part of the LGBTQIA plus community to do it because it's not safe for them to have those conversations. So starting in the home, but there's also, um, if you've got the space and education and access, you know, impacting legislation and making petitions and looking at the law, and that's what, you know, Benji and, you know, others have done with petitions. That's such important work as well. But I think wherever you are, you can constantly look at self-betterment and learning more and also being open to being called out. I think that's a big thing. If you're going to post up, you better be ready to be called out. And I'm open to being called out. You know, if I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong. Why am I wrong? Like, constructive criticism is so important, but it's, we've got to be careful not to let that turn into cancel culture because we can't cancel people for not knowing what they don't know. You know, look at yourself, what are you doing? How are you benefiting? Change up your ways and also see what you can do in your community, grassroots and also systemic.